So listen, 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 listen. I'm God's hype girl here. I gotta get you guys hyped up about a relationship with God. Like, don't miss out, don't miss out, don't miss out. It's crazy, guys, how God is so deeply involved in my life. Like, deeply, 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 deeply. Like, one day I'm talking to my son, Joshi. We're having an appointment with God. Next thing I know, my husband starts talking to me in the background of the conversation. And I said to him, I said, honey, see, this is a big part of my problem. You make me feel so bad all the time. You always fight me, always fuss at me about something. Right? So that was my conversation with him. Like, you don't give me any confidence. All you do is tell me everything that I'm doing wrong. And that's what I'm lacking. I'm lacking confidence. Like I run to my God tree, just looking, getting, trying to get this confidence and this courage to take on this business. And my husband, honestly, somebody who's supposed to cheer me on, I'm screaming at him, say, you always make me feel like crap, like I can't do it. <laughs> so this was an argument we had one day in front of my little son, Joshi, you know. So the next day, unbelievably, the very next day, Carrie posts a post on his Facebook wall and listen to what it says. It says, sometimes we're longing for a family member to believe in us, cherish on, or for a friend to encourage us, but it's just the opposite. I'm talking exactly, exactly, exactly what's going on with me, guys. Like here I am waiting for this husband to say, Nick, I believe in you. You know, I shouldn't have to be calling my brothers to try and boost my confidence. You know, that should come from my husband, right? But it's not, it is what it is, like Donald Trump said. So this post on Carrie's wall was just a message from God to me. And so he says, there will be people close to you who don't think you can accomplish what God put in your heart. You have to say as Paul did, so what if they don't believe? I love them, I love you my husband, but I'm going to be deaf to their unbelief. These are tests we have to pass. You don't need them to believe in you. Be respectful, but be deaf to their unbelief. The quicker you get rid of it, the better you'll be. If you dwell on it, it will become a lie that infest, infects you, your thinking. You can play defeat in your mind and have victory. Guys, that thing just blew me away. Like how intimately, intimately, intimately God is involved in my life. For hubby to just get on the little conversation with me and my son and just start fighting, fussing me out, telling me everything I do wrong and I don't listen to him and I make bad decisions. I said, honey, this is my problem, man. You don't give me any confidence. You just tell me everything I've been doing wrong. <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It's a tough hobby I have. That's why I have to train myself like an athlete every day. Every day I have to train like an athlete. Mike Tyson and Tom Brady and one just to take out this husband, guys. So for God to go as far to have Carrie post on his wall the next day, say sometimes we're longing for a family member to believe in us. Exactly me, guys. I'm longing, longing, longing for this husband to say, Nikki, I believe in you. You can do it. And honestly, I get the opposite, guys. And if there's anything that I do right, silence, complete silence. Anything I do wrong, he brings up my mistakes from 10 years ago. <laughs> but that's life, you know, we're not gonna find perfect people, guys. So we just have to learn to be patient with each other. And I'm his biggest encourager, you know. I'm forever telling him he's better than best husband, better than best dad, but he does the opposite to me. But I think that's just a part of my assignment from God to take on all these blows from the hubby. Nikki, you do this wrong, you do this wrong, you do this wrong. And to just come and tell you God's way of responding to whatever comes our way. So you see how God gave me specific instructions? He says, you're going to say, so what if they don't believe? I'm going to be deaf. He said, you need to, he said, be respectful, but be deaf to their unbelief. And my husband is somebody who's honestly earned my respect, guys. I, I respect him infinity percent for where he's brought our family. But you hear what God said. Sometimes you're going to be deaf 
Okay, it's very important, guys, to learn to be deaf to people. Okay, so not everything that people say, you're going to take it in. So if someone says 10,000 words against us, we look at it and see, okay, where can we improve? And that's what I do with the words of hubby. I look at it and say, okay, Nick, he's right over here, but he's wrong over here. <laughs> you know, and I do my thing. I'm a little bit of a stubborn wife, guys. <laughs> but I always ask God, what is it that he would have me to do? So sometimes he said, God tells me, Nick, you respectfully ignore hubby on this one. You know, so sometimes I have to make some decisions because my sister-in-law, she said, look, your husband can't make decisions from Nigeria for things that are going on here. And so I run with that. So sometimes I have to respectfully make executive decisions, what I feel is best based on me being here. Okay, guys, so it's the wisdom from God that I don't want you guys to miss out on. Like, I was driving from work driving to work and I'm like oh god I need somebody to help me because this is just too much and so God told me in my spirit he said call George now George is somebody who we had scheduled for an interview and George flaked on me you know and I'm like god this guy's already disrespecting me I'm not calling him back for any other interview but God just told me in his spirit call George and can you believe me and George have been working together from that day and we've been fighting every day but we've been laughing with each other all day and having a good time, me and George even decided that we're gonna be the ones helping each other to be better. You know, so don't miss out on this relationship with God, man. You know, he gives us the wisdom that we need. Here I am driving to work, say, God, I need help, I need help. And you just say, Nick, call George. And so it was so funny that last Saturday, uh, George, I'm driving to work again and God just said, or driving back home from work and God just said Nick be patient with George and like less than an hour or two hours I spoke to, to George and George said Nick God told me to be patient with you you know so we just need to be patient with each other guys that's an important lesson I'm learning from God okay patience 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 so next a uh, close relationship with God guys we need to have this patience okay to be patient with each other so even with the hubby who screams at me and tells me everything I'm doing wrong, no problem, bring it on, honey. This wife can handle it. I got God as my partner, so yes, sometimes we fall, sometimes we make mistakes, but there are important lessons that God would have us to learn so that we could be better, man. Okay, so no shame in my game. I'm not perfect, I fall a million times, but I keep getting back up a million and one. Okay, guys, so don't miss out on this relationship with God, man. Let me tell you, I'm looking tired because I run into that tree in the dark. Oh, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you, God. I need you to be my partner in this business. So I told everybody in my support group yesterday, I said, it's called a takeover. I'm going to show all of you that I'm going to do this business better than all of you, even Jason, my business guru. I said, I'm going to be the one teaching you. <laughs> Because I feel like this close relationship that I have with God, he's my advisor, he's my partner, man. Okay, so we're not going to do better than this. To have this relationship with God where we're intertwined with him all day, every day. God, what is it that you would have me to do? So you see how he showed up in that message? Say, Nick, be deaf. Be deaf to your husband. Be deaf, be deaf, be deaf. And do what you've got to do, knowing that I'm by your side. I'm your partner in this business. Okay, guys, so don't miss out on the best life of God. Nobody can tell me that was so coincidence or my hubby is fussing me out in front of my son, you know. And God say, Nick, just respectfully be there. <laughs> so don't miss out on this wisdom for God, this life with him. I still love you, my honey, but you're still the better than best husband, the better than best dad for the position where you've brought our family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I bow to you. But in regards to me not doing this business, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Don't miss out, guys. The best life with Papa God. Peace.